uh, I would just introduce myself. Um, uh, my name is Adam Meyer or Adam Major. You can call me either. And today I would like to quickly talk to you about DNS. Uh, and why? Because I view it as a kind of a forgotten service. We, we always talk about everything else. DNS is something that we stop thinking about. We delegate control of it to everybody else. And we, it's like, so to make things short, DNS, it works. So the talk is over. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah. But then everything else doesn't work, right? The VPN is down. The proxy fails sometimes, but most of the time it works. The mail doesn't work in the morning. Um, I can't connect to the internet. Everything doesn't work. I have site not found. Maybe you mistyped something or something. Other people will say, uh, I just use Google, they're perfect, or Cloudflare, they protect my privacy, and they, everything is working always, except sometimes not. So my favorite example here for something that is down is VPN is down. Uh, this is not from lay people that don't know what they're talking about. This, is, this comes from people that actually are technical people. And uh, if you take OpenVPN, you run OpenVPN in, 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 in default configuration. You specify your, your gateway. The gateway is resolved. You have VPN is up. So you're done. You close your laptop. You go somewhere. You open your laptop. VPN is down. Oh, OK. Oh, my website doesn't work. This is broken. Everything is broken. How come it's broken? Uh, then you restart, you close this open VPN, and everything starts to work again. What, what happened? What happened? Well, what happened was that open VPN tried to resolve the DNS. The DNS is forwarded through the open VPN uh, tunnel, which was actually not working anymore. And the DNS was not working, and everything broke. So open VPN this uh, dust itself in the default configuration. Another example is from, from, a, from a customer. This is a, this is a real example, uh, where they said this proxy, it, it, it works perfectly, except sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it fails. Yeah, and then it was like, well, can you send us the logs? We send you the logs, and it's like, okay, it's replying. Sometimes it's failing. It's like it's not find something. What, what is going on? Okay, let's do a TCP dump. And then the TCP dump, we find that they set their DNS to well, the perfect 8888. So the perfect 8888 sometimes didn't reply anything, and the proxy said, OK, um, there's nothing. So my talk is about DNS because it forms the core of the network. Everything depends on it. Of course, there will be people here who say, oh, no, no, there's the, the autonomous system. That's the more important. But for the end user, the thing that is the most important is not the autonomous system that they don't have control over, it's the DNS that they do have a little bit control over. So the core of the network is the DNS. And when we talk about DNS, people uh, don't know what they're, uh, there's different, this is, there's some uh, nomenclature, there, uh, there's what means definitions, uh, some definitions we need to know about quickly is what is a zone in DNS, there's always a zone, zone, zone this, zone that. And that just means uh, you can say domain, subdomain, your directory, etc. Uh, there's a notion of the root in the DNS. What is this root? The root is not opensusa.org. It's not the org you can heard about. It's the dot you don't see at the end of the domain. So opensusa.org dot, and the dot is right there. That's the that's the root the source of everything. Yeah? Then there's this acronym TLD, top level domain. What is the top level domain? OpenSUSE.org? Is that top level domain? No, 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 no. The top level domain is the org. That's the top level domain. And then we always go to these registrar. Registrar this, they will sell us the domain and provide everything. But what is this registrar? Registrar is actually an entity that is delegated by these top-level domains to provide kind of a, a, a unique, unique uh, labeling. So, so for example, if somebody wants to register opensusa.org, make sure that it only exists once, 
and there's not five of them. So they, they are mostly responsible for uniqueness. There's some administrative work, et cetera, but they're mostly responsible for uniqueness of the system so it doesn't fall apart. Once you're past the registrar, then you're the authority. So you register opensusa.org, or maybe, maybe not that, maybe you register something that is available, like mysuperdomain.org, and then you become the owner of this. This is becomes your, your zone of control. So, and then we, we always have this notion about DNS server. DNS server is down, but DNS has different servers. There's two servers that we talk about in DNS. There's the authoritative server. This is the one that has authority over the zone or over the domain or, or over a set of zones or whatever. And then we have a recursive server. Um, yeah, system D resolve D is not a recursive server, but uh, we have a recursive server. What is a recursive server? A recursive server is how you can find Google, so you can find Facebook. That's a that's a recursive server. It it queries the system. It queries the authoritative servers to find what is where. So, on Wikipedia, this is how they have this structure of a domain name system. Um, you can also view it as a directory structure. So if you're familiar with uh, the way that uh, directories are laid out, at the root we have the slash, that's the root, or here there's the top of a tree. And then the tree grows down like in a normal tree. Yeah, the tree grows down from the roots up and down, down yes. So uh, this is actually from a uh, normal tree in computer science way, upside down. Um, and each of these circles here are zones of control. So no name server anywhere knows everything. These root name servers, they don't, they're not the most important. They're not anything. They're just no, their zone of control. And they will reply about this. So. Uh, when we talk about DNS, we should know exactly how this looks, how the resolution looks, because it's, it's sometimes confusing for people. So when, you, when you're asking, where is opensusa.org, what happens? Let's assume that the, you start your recursive server, or somebody starts a recursive server, and that is for asking, where is what? So you, uh, you ask a recursive server, where is www.opensusa.org? Where is it? And the recursive server knows nothing. There is a blank cache. It has, it has nothing except it has a list. There's a static list of, of root servers that it has. And it picks one, and it asks it, where is, where is www.opensusa.org? And this root server, which is what's at the top of this tree, it says, I, I don't know, yeah, because it doesn't know. But it knows, like, oh, but I know you can maybe ask this, this I know where this, this end part is, the org. The org is, is these org name servers. They will, they will tell you more, maybe. You should ask and check this 199 port, whatever, and, and don't ask me again. Don't ask me again about the org, anything that ends with the org, because this is good response for a day or something. Yeah, don't ask me again for, for org stuff. And then uh, you, the, the iterator go, goes back. It's like, OK, so I can check this next one. Maybe, maybe they know where this www.opensusa.org is. So let's ask the org server, the org name server, the authoritative server. They're asking, where is this www.opensusa.org? And they said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We don't know. We don't know where is this record. I don't know. But we know where this n name server for opensusa.org is because they're registered here. So we have a namespace allocated. So, so check this name server, which is at 62, blah, blah, blah. And, and they will, maybe they can help you. And then, OK, OK. And also, don't, don't come back to me for another half an hour because I will just tell you the same thing. As, uh, assume this is correct for the next an hour or whatever. So the iterator already has two answers with some cache, and then it goes and, okay, so I know these OpenSUSE name server is this. Okay, let's go ask it. Uh, where is www.opensusa.org? It's like, oh, oh, okay, I know, I know, I know, I, I'm the authority, and it's, it's here. It's at 195. blah, blah, blah. 
and the iterator then responds to your query, the server is here at the 195. But it also has some extra cache already because it was querying other things. So now, for example, if you go and ask where is kernel.org, it doesn't have to go back to the root server anymore. It just goes directly to the org name server and says, oh, where is this kernel.org because you're supposedly org authority. So, so in a way, DNS is not really a domain name system. It's mostly like a distributed name system. And it's distributed because we have these, these root name servers. These, these are the lists that every recursor will have. Is these 13, they're operated by different, different uh, institutions, most of them in US for one reason or another. But if you do a ping to any of them, you will see that they replay quickly, like 20, 30 milliseconds. And then you go to some other continent, like North America, and then you ping them all, and then like, oh, it's still 20, 30 milliseconds. You go to Australia, and it's still the same. It's like, are they breaking laws of physics here? I mean, speed of light has to travel around the world to get to IP addresses, right? Um, this is not a unique IP address for the world. This is an any cast address. So it's actually, there are many servers around the world in different networks. And when you ping this or when you query the server, it goes to the one closest to you. And yeah, this is where that autonomous system comes in, but we're not discussing that now. And so any of these 13 servers, these IP addresses are actually dozen, maybe two dozen servers, maybe more. If the load increases, there's more. They're doing, maybe each one of them are doing maybe 100,000 replies per, per second, 100,000 queries. And the interesting thing is half of them are bogus. Like half of them are for things that, that are not top level domains, just random things. Um, and also, before we were talking about opensusa.org, what, what is this when we're asking opensusa.org? When we think about DNS, we think about name going to an address that we can contact. But a DNS has a lot of different types of records in its zone. So the IP address that we saw before is the host address, the A record. There's also IPv6 here. There's a aliases. There is a mail things, no name servers, pointers. There's a descriptive text there too that somebody thought it would be a handy thing for contact information, but it's actually handy for everything else but contact information. We have a whole bunch of DNS records. We have everything. There's things that are duplicates under different names. For example, the CAA. The certificate authority authorization is kind of duplicated by the transport layer security authentication. So we have different ways of doing the same thing. There's other records not listed. Some things like I can't list a dozen more uh, or two dozen more, but they exist for one thing or another reason. And why is this so complicated? Why, why is there so many things? It's because DNS is the one thing we have on the internet that is required to, for it to function, one thing, and it's distributed, the, the DNS provides you with short immutable answers. So there's short immutable records. You can configure the caching mechanism of every single record individually, if you like, and this makes it useful. It makes it useful more than just resolve an IP address, right? So, and we also should talk about some technologies here. DNS is DNS, right? DNS was standardized in the RFCs, so, so for interoperability reasons, they, there's some publications here. Uh, 1987, it predates it by a few years anyway. Um, this was extended, there's now dozens and dozens of RFCs about DNS, about different records, the purpose, etc. 
some of them obsolete, some of them not, some of them obsolete on other ones, etc. And most of it is, is something that is transparent to us when we query things, because things change underneath the hood, but the system works the same. Nothing really changed since the old days. So for example, nobody is querying, oh, is my DNS doing expanded DNS? Is it? You know, it probably is, but we don't think about it as an end user. We did hear recently more about stuff like DNS script, then followed that with DNS over TLS, which is more standard. And then we have the new, D quote unquote new, DNS over HTTPS, because anything goes over HTTPS. And then there's, of course, DNSSEC, and people are confused about it because some people say it's for dosing some other things, and why do we need it when we have HTTP, when we have DNS over HTTPS, or et cetera. But these technologies are not all the same. We, the three in the middle pro are for the same thing. They're mostly between servers. So uh, there's integrity and maybe confidentiality of something queries between servers, maybe between the client and the server. But it's, it's this last mile maybe confidentiality. Think of it as like HTTPS. HTTPS provides confidentiality and integrity between you and the server, but that's it. DNSSEC, on the other hand, is not about confidentiality. It's all purely about integrity of the record. So when you have something that is, that is signed with the DNSSEC protocol, it's, it's validated not by a server, but it's validated by the actual authority behind, this, behind the zone, which is actually the, the you, it could be you. So quickly, I would like to talk about the first three, which kind of coalesce into DNS over HTTPS, uh, because this is now something that is supported the most by most systems. Um, Windows 10 supports it, natively android allows you to override in local dns with with a setting now of dns over https firefox chrome have it natively you have now of course uh, dns since it's over https you can have it as a as part of a web application now which is obviously useful um, and we have a proxy that provides dns over https in in the OBS, in the server DNS product, it's the, it's the, it's the DNS dist package. And now let's talk a little, bit, a little bit longer about DNSSEC, because this is a little bit uh, confusing for some people, and it's a little bit uh, longer topic. In essence, DNSSEC is, is something that is good. It should not be uh, disregarded, but it requires a little bit of attention of, of what it is. So DNSSEC is the purpose of it is to validate the authenticity of a of a record. It allows you to trust a distributed network. So when you get some answer from a cache or even the authoritative server, you know that it's actually from the authoritative source. Not the when when we when we do an HTTPS request, we trust the machine. When we do a DNSSEC validation, we can trust the human again. So it's in essence, it's similar to you get a tarball from a HTTPS server or you get a signed tarball, right? That's the difference. DNSSEC is this signing of the tarball equivalent. Um, DNSSEC is widely deployed already on the root zones, on the TLDs, because uh, I'm not going to talk about the details of it because uh, there's not enough time, obviously. But it's used, I'm happy that it's used by OpenSUSE, it's used by Debian, Cloudflare uses it for everybody. But we're still waiting, of course, on the, on the commercial side, like SUSE.com, Microsoft.com, Google.com, they're not signed. Mm, why? Maybe because Slack was down, I don't know. No. That's a bit of a joke. But I don't want to be into talking about jokes too much. <laughs> so, uh, since DNSSEC also provides 
authenticity, strong authenticity, we can compare it a little bit to the CA model. CA model is the certificate authorities when the HTTPS certificates. They're also there to provide some kind of authenticity. Um, but there's a, one huge difference. In your browser or in OpenSSL, there's 100 plus CAs. We all trust them equally, right? Um, they all have proper validation. They all prop have the same public accountability. Everything is good because Mozilla told us or somebody else because, uh, yeah, we trust them. Actually, we have no choice. We have no choice because we disregard DNSSEC. DNSSEC has one root, and in this sense of security, it's, it's better to have less because you can worry about less. There's less point of compromise. There's one root. And the si there's actually a signing ceremony that happens every three months. It's publicly broadcast. It requires multiple people. It, it requires human intervention to sign the root with a key signing key. So in, one se in this sense, the DNSSEC has superior transparency and oversight over the CA model. DNSSEC is primarily used as an authenticity for with offline signing. You can use also, if you require some zone to be online signed, because for example, you have the HCP segment that is changing through whatever, use the DNS features, delegate the zone, sign part of it with a key that is online, the root stays offline. By the root, of course, I mean the, your zone, like OpenSUSE stays offline, the key for that. One of the things that DNSSEC needs is expanded DNS for 20 years old. Everybody actually has it now. Um, so it's, 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 it's available. And one of the things that I found very interesting when I, when I researched this thing was that 90% of resolvers actually already are fetching DNSSEC records. They will fetch it from all the zones because they do the uh, DNSSEC is okay flag. They have it on. Why do they have it on? Because this is something that is not part of the configuration. It's, 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 it's on by default, I guess, and they will fetch all the records. But only one third of them will do any validation because people will just turn it off or maybe ISPs turn it off. And why do they turn it off when we go back? We, we can go back to the original uh, thing that I talked about that internet is down. They don't want to have support calls. So they don't bother with DNSSEC because nobody cares. So why? And one thing that is, uh, you maybe you would like to know is that DNS, uh, Power DNS recursive server is in factory and it has DNSSEC enabled default configuration since 2017. So if you just install it, it will be validating and nobody was complaining yet. So that must be good. So DNS is distributed. DNS is distributed. This is a graph about how many how many of the, of, the, of the queries are validating or not validating. But the gray graph is, is maybe most eye striking, the gray part here. It goes from 10% to 15%, 16%, 17%. This is the queries that DNS, that Google DNS is doing for us. So this is the amount of total queries of, of DNS for all the internet that go through Google. And it's, it's growing. It's actually now higher than maybe individual root servers are doing. And we are trusting, a, we are de-distributing our DNS by being lazy and trusting one entity. So this is not something I'm talk, I'm, I would like to say that Google is doing actually an excellent job. They're validating, they're, they're, they're helping, but at the same time, DNS is not meant to be centralized. It's supposed to be distributed. The answer, of course, is to run your own recursor. Since the DNS protocol hasn't really changed, it's still doing UDP packets mostly, and it's still very small, this, the, the programs are efficient, they're reliable, they're fast. 
when you run your own recursor, you can validate and you can actually trust it that nobody between your recursor and you is modifying the answer, spoofing the results because it's all plain text. Uh, you're no longer allowing somebody like Google Google to coalesce your data and track you. Um, you can also run your own H DNS over HTTPS if you'd like. So this is not something that is this heavy. It's only a few kilobytes. You can run it on Raspberry Pi Zero on your network and not delegate it to entities that may or may not be evil. So in the end, I would like to say stay safe, keep everything, keep the distributed distributed, validate. Yeah, thank you. And I will be around. You can ask me questions. Um, in the afternoon, I have a talk about uh, asset, web asset security. If you'd like to join, it kind of is linked with this topic as well. So thank you for coming. And I hope at least part of one slide was a little bit interesting.